Hey friends and welcome back to the garden. Today is not a garden tour day. Today is a day where I tell you what is happening to our tomatoes and what we have found out. So if this is the first time you have watched this video and you haven't seen any of my garden tours, I planted five different types of tomatoes earlier in this year and they've died in waves like it was wave after wave after wave and i have tried everything to figure out what is happening to my tomatoes now we do the back to eating garden method so a lot of people assumed i wasn't watering them enough they weren't getting enough water and thought maybe that could be it so i was like okay maybe watered a little you know on just some of the tomatoes to see if it made an improvement it didn't do it. Some people thought maybe I was over pruning my tomatoes. So I tested some out, didn't prune them, pruned them very little, made no changes. As you can see from my beefsteak tomatoes here, they are dead. They are deader than dead. They still have some green on them, but all of their leaves have died off. Their tomatoes are hanging on. And this one down here, if you can see, is already starting to blush, even with the plant looking like this. These are the most recent casualties to whatever is going on. These are my Amish paste tomatoes. As you can see, they start out like this. The leaves are curling under, and then the leaves go to this. They are completely curled up and deformed. From there, the leaves progress to this. They are completely wilted. They are still soft to the touch, still green, but 100% wilted. From there, our leaves are getting crispy and progressing to this. Now what's interesting enough about these plants is they still have fruit and the fruit is still ripening on the vine even with crispy crispy leaves now here is one tomato in this same bed of tomatoes that is dying it's still producing it's still got buds its leaves are starting to curl and get deformed they're drying out. I can tell what is coming. But I can't stop it. It's big and beautiful. It reaches a good six feet tall. This is not anything that affects small, freshly planted tomatoes. These have been here a while. The next bed over, these over here are my San Marzano tomatoes. As you can see, the leaves on here look a whole lot better. Some minor curling, some minor twisting, but much, much healthier leaves. These are still setting fruit. There's a baby tomato there. I've got lots and lots of tomatoes on my vines. These tomatoes are beautiful and they are right next to these tomatoes. Over here, I have ground cherries that are flourishing and behind them I have beta lux tomatoes that are doing fairly well. Over here, I have a mixture of the tomatoes. These were my leftover tomato starts. As you can see, this one is wilting and dying. This one I pulled up to check it for bacterial wilt. This one is starting to wilt. See how our leaves are starting to curve in? They're folding up, they're getting deformed. This one is gone. It's completely wilted. And this one is beautiful. So I spoke with our cleansing extension office that really deals with agriculture and every state i think should have one of these and they're mostly run out of the university so clemson is ours here in south carolina 
you call their hotline up and they give you different numbers home and garden you know preserving and canning things like that I spoke to the home and garden lady since it's my garden and we talked it over and I explained to her what was happening that it's only my tomatoes that are affected in my entire garden cucumbers and squash beautiful beans beautiful even my peppers in the same bed as my tomatoes just the other side of the trellis beautiful so what could be affecting my tomatoes and killing them in this very specific way that I can basically pinpoint when they're going to die because it follows the same exact pattern. Now, the thing about our situation is over here in this opening is a field. They have tobacco and corn. Over here is another field where they're growing corn. Over here is another field where they're growing some other plant that I don't know what it is. We are surrounded by fields. And so speaking to her, being able to basically tell her, hey, I can basically trace when my tomatoes are gonna die and I have fields around me. I can smell them spraying. We both come to the conclusion that it was possibly drift. She told me to reach out to a different person who actually deals with the drift issues and works with the farmer specifically, things like that. I reached out to him and he said, drift is a possibility but he wanted to come check my garden first so this morning he comes out to check my garden to see what he can see and see what's going on he had in mind that it was different things right away he could say this ain't drift i think it's this but i need to prove it first and he starts digging around the base of my tomatoes looking for something and he's like okay i'm not seeing what i'm expecting to see it's not what i think it is and he keeps going and he keeps going and he can't find a cause. And he's like, can I take one of these tomatoes with me to test it? And I'm like, absolutely. They're dying. They're basically dead. Take one with you. He dug up a tomato and this is what he found. This is my beefsteak tomatoes. The ones you've seen that are so close to death. The soil around them is still very, very wet. I can squeeze it and it stays together. I don't know if y'all can see it on there, but like it literally is like very moist. The roots, we use this big one right here as an example. This is how he showed me to test for this and then I'll tell you what it is. If you grab the roots and you pull, do you see how my roots are sloughing off? You see how it's like sloughing off right there? I can just pull, I can pull this outer layer of the root shaft off. See, that's the outer layer of my root shaft. You can still see the little hairs and stuff on it where my roots were growing. It pulled right off. Up here at the base, it's doing the same. But up here, these roots are new roots. These are baby roots. So what causes the roots to do this? He said it is a root rot called Phytophthora. Phytophthora. I have to put it down here. It is quite the spelling, let me tell you. And the sloughing of the root shaft is a telltale sign that you're having this issue. But the kicker is, this normally only occurs in people who overwater their garden. Remember, we do back to Eden. I don't water. I don't water my garden hardly ever. The only time my garden gets water is if I'm watering in a fertilizer, like I use a liquid fertilizer, or when I'm done washing my laundry, because I hand wash and use natural soaps, I will pour that water on my garden so it doesn't go to waste. That's it guys. That is all I water in my garden. That's it. I don't have a water hose. We live off grid. We have rainwater catchment. I don't have a water hose. I don't have a water pump where I can pump water out here to the garden. I don't water. We use wood chips to maintain our garden. Phytophthora normally occurs in overwatered gardens. 
except the issue we had is we brought in bagged compost. Phytophthora was more than likely present in our compost. That is why only some beds are not affected and my one tomato bed here is not having any issues. Because I dumped two bags of compost per bed, that compost and that bed most likely come from a separate batch and it was not infected. The compost in this bed and that bed were affected and likely this bed over here, one bag was affected and the other one wasn't. So I asked him, what can I do to stop this from killing my tomatoes? What can I do next year when I plant to keep this from killing my tomatoes? My family needs these tomatoes to preserve. We are working towards self-sustainability and we need to be able to produce our own tomatoes and tomato-based products to be able to get there. What can I do? Nothing. These beds are already infected. There's nothing you can do to kill it. The only way to kill it is to let the beds dry out. He said to save the remaining tomatoes, the only thing he can recommend is shallow watering, not deep watering, but we don't water. His only other recommendations was to try container gardening next year or to rotate our beds and play musical beds with our tomatoes next year to see what beds are affected and which ones are not. Um, obviously this bed over here with my San Marzano tomatoes is still thriving and I'm keeping my fingers crossed it will continue. But our other beds, the ones that have tomatoes in it now, I cannot plant tomatoes in again for at least two years and hope that does the trick. But there's no way to combat it. I know there are so many people out there right now who are having issues in their garden due to bad compost. And a lot of it is herbicides and stuff that was maybe spread on a hay, that was fed to an animal, that was composted, and it's killing your garden. But if your leaves of your tomatoes are looking like mine, herbicide in your compost may not be your culprit. I am so thankful it was not drift from that field that is killing our tomatoes. I am very thankful that one bed at least isn't affected and that it may make it there and I may get to harvest those tomatoes. And I'm sure the company that we bought our bad compost from did not mean to infect my garden with this Phytophthora. But they did. Now we just bought cheap bad compost from Walmart and Lowe's to fill our beds. It wasn't anything expensive. It wasn't anything organic necessarily. It wasn't anything bought from a nursery or in bulk or anything like that. Um, and maybe going the cheap route was what done me in. I don't know. But this is something we will now be battling in our garden. Probably for a very, very long time. And it doesn't only affect tomatoes. It can affect fruit trees, nut trees, my strawberries, peppers. He did tell me tomatillos, like my ground cherries, are not normally affected by this. So I could plant them in the affected beds next year. Corn is another one he said is not normally affected by this and I could plant them in those beds next year. So I will be rotating my crops next year and I may go through and plant one tomato in each and every bed next year just to see what tomatoes survive and which ones don't. I will also be developing more raised beds next year and using our own compost and hopefully that does the trick. But the problem with Phytophthora is when we get heavy rains and we are in South Carolina we get heavy rains that Phytophthora spreads through the rain. It like washes from one bed to the next. So eventually all of my beds will probably be affected. It's the sad reality of where we're at. There are some root rot resistant tomatoes and stuff out there that I will look into getting seeds from 
and trying to plant them. Our thing is we are on a journey to self-sustainability. So I need a tomato I can save seeds from, plant and get that tomato. I need a stabilized hybrid if I'm gonna use it, but I prefer heirlooms because I know they're stable. That's where we are. If you are dealing with Phytophthora, please let me know. If you think you may have got it from bad compost, let me know that too. I am so thankful to have an answer as to what is killing my tomatoes, but I wish it was something that I could fix, you know, like a nutrient deficiency or something that I could fix. It's not. And it's something I will be battling for a very, very long time now, probably a few years. And that sucks. We are going to up our composting game and continue to make our own compost so next year we will not bring any in but there's a chance our compost is already going to be tainted with the phytophthora and there's no way to know until I plant something in it and it dies. If you are having an issue with phytophthora and you are trying to save your tomato plants and you water your garden the best thing he said you can do is shallow water it a few times a day because as you've seen on my plant it was getting baby roots up there at the top and those baby roots are still able to take in those water for your plant and it could save your tomatoes now if you're growing on a large scale or something that may not be your best option and shallow watering tomatoes often actually kind of dilutes their flavor instead of allowing it to concentrate so again not the best option but it is a way to possibly save your harvest and not let everything go to waste i will be doing more research on phytophthora and what it is and how i can produce tomatoes and stuff with having this issue which tomatoes and stuff are resistant to this issue different things like that how i can combat this these tomatoes in this one bed, the beefsteak bed that is so bad, are for sure coming out. The ones in my other beds, I'm going to let hang on until the fruit ripens. He did say that fruit is still safe to eat. It does not affect the quality of the fruit. It affects the plant's ability to uptake water, which is why it dies. So the ones that have the bigger fruit that are still hanging on, we're gonna let go, we're gonna let ripen, and then I will turn them into sauce and be thankful that I got at least a few tomatoes out of the deal. If you're dealing with this and you have any advice, please leave it in the comments below. If you're dealing with this and you just wanna rant about it, please leave that in the comments below too. Y'all, people read these comments to learn. So if you've got advice, I want to read them to learn. I know other people do please leave it in the comments so you can go on to help somebody else and make a difference in their life and in their garden. That's all I have for you today, friends. So, until next time, bye. bye. See, See you later. I'm turning it off.